Hello, hello, my fellow Jeep noobers and wheeling noobers and adventure noobers and whatever else you want to call yourself. Yes, I'm still using that name and I'm going to continue doing it because it's kind of the brand for this channel. Uh, we've lost some subscribers. That's okay. We've gained some new subscribers. Welcome. Growing pains of having a channel. It's just how things work. Things just cycle through. Getting closer to our trip now. We're a couple days away from actually leaving. We're really excited. We don't have near as much planned as we probably should. We have a couple checklists in place but nothing is packed up and ready to go. So we're kind of doing this plan, but at the same time completely just nonchalant, just gonna have a great time with this. We know the majority of what we're gonna do and what we need, so it's not like we're going in there completely blind. If you haven't noticed, this trip has been mainly supported by products that we need that we're gonna be using as tools. It's not gonna be heavy on lifts, wheels, tires, armor, you know, flexing shots, all that good stuff. We're going out there to have a good time, to hit some trails, to just to just enjoy the capabilities of taking out a stock rig, which I feel like a lot of people miss out on. So we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Shay is not having fun with the mud terrain. She wants me to put street tires back on the Jeep, on the, oh, look at me, back on the 4Runner, but that's not gonna happen. In front of me, I got another unboxing I'm about to do for our trip. I'm pretty excited about this because I've never had anything quite like this before. I've had smaller variants, but nothing to this extent. <clears throat> Funny story, I'm not like stingent on paying for things. I'll, you know, I'll pay for what it is, but if I know I can get it for cheaper, then I'm going to buy it for cheaper. I feel like most people feel the same way, especially if it's the same product. Why am I going to pay more for the same thing? So I did a lot of online shopping for this and Four Wheel Parts was trying to sell it to me for like $200, hopped on Amazon, and I ended up picking it up from Walmart, which was kind of surprising, but it just had the best price. And that's picked up in store, which gave me like another $4 discount. This was just under $150. For what it is, and for what it's capable of doing, you know, it's kind of one of those buy once, cry once things. So without further ado, let's see if I can get this out of here. So, right, uh, Shay's at work. Here's what we got going on. Brochures, box. Ugh. Knock the camera down, my bad. So anyways, this is what it is. This is the Via Air 400P portable compressor. They have different variants. There's C versus P. C is for the onboard systems that you actually set up for your rigs. P is for the portable version. Now, there's different sizes and everything like that. I ended up going with the 400 because I know it's good for bigger tires too. And let's be honest, down the line I'm going to end up with bigger tires again, whether it's 35s, 37s, whatever. On um, the next Jeep rig, maybe JL, who knows. Either way, I'm going to end up with bigger tires again. Plus having a little bit of overkill for extra speed is never going to hurt anybody. The other good thing about getting the portable version is I can always mount it and end up doing a hard mount within the rig. I got the portable because I want to be able to take it from different rigs and help people out. But I'm still thinking I'm probably going to temporarily mount it inside the engine bay with quick disconnects so I can just remove it or leave it clamped in there and just use it as, as uh, within the engine bay. So what I'm thinking is just mount it to the side, run the wire, run the cables to the, to the battery, and then I'll have the extension to air up the rig. So it'll be onboard air installed, but at the same time I can just do quick disconnects or maybe... Um, what is those little wing nuts or something to make it come off pretty easily. So that's kind of my plan with this. I did a lot of research before getting this with different brands. Obviously there's some ARB ones and everything, but the Buyer Air had really good reviews. Smitty Belt had a version that was a little bit faster. I think it was like 5.56 CFMs. If you understand why I remember that number, you are a rifleman also. But needless to say, I went with the Buyer Air just because when it comes to stuff that I'm going to be relying on in a pinch or something that could save my ass, I'll pay a little bit more for the brand. Obviously, Smitty Belt has a good reputation for their air pump. Their other parts, take that as what you, what you will, but their air pump has a really good reputation. But anyways, I wanted to go with a little bit better brand for that. Like I said, mainly because if it's going to be a tool that's going to help me get out of a situation, then I'm going to um, pay a little extra for it. Plus, 150 bucks for, you know, basically, essentially onboard air. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. It'll save you time, you can go air down anywhere you want, and you're, you're good to go. Uh, first things first, oh, decals. 
you know me and my decals, so I'll set that up. I gotta figure out a place to put my decals. I wanna put them on the rig, but I'm not 100% sure where I'm gonna put them yet. So, just some different series. This is considered the portable heavyweight series. Uh, once you get to the 400P, uh, the max duty cycle is 33% at 100 PSI. You cannot run power tools and whatnot off this, but you can always hook up an air tank later on down the line, which is another reason why I went with the portable, because I can do whatever I want with this. Um, the non-portable ones aren't set up to be portable, so you're kind of a little bit more limited. So another reason I went with this. There's different versions of the 400P, and then there's different variants of all different sizes. But this was just a good size for what I wanted to do. I almost went with the, the 300, but I just bit the bullet. The 400P wasn't that much more. And for anybody looking for a little bit more specs, here's the side of the box. You can go ahead and pause this screen and read whatever you would like. But it's basically got the fill rates for the 31s, 33s, 35s, performance data, and then the specifications right there. So there you guys go. If you got any other questions, as I mentioned, just hit me up. Here's the other side of the box for some more specs. 40 feet total cord length, blah, blah, blah. It's light, 5-1 deflator. And then there's the front with some more features on it. Hope that helps you guys out. Obviously it comes in this cool carrying case. I'm seeing all this for the first time with you guys too, uh, besides what I've seen online. And so far I'm impressed. I love that it comes durable like this. Uh, as you've noticed with my GPCA grip handles with the Jump Plus jump thing that we just got, everything is really good quality, so I can appreciate that. Let's see what's in this first one. All right, we have 33 foot of coil hose with a pressure gauge on it. Goes up to 100 PSI. I think it yep, also has a locking valve stem on it. If you can't see that, it does lock on there. That actually feels really good quality, so I'm pretty happy. It also lets you deflate your tires too, so when you want to air down, you have the opportunity to just deflate it using this as well. So that's really cool. This is pretty light. It comes with different little nozzles too um, for your air mattresses or basketball pumps or anything like that. Go with that also. And now for the main event. I'm looking forward to this. We have the pump itself. First things first, this is the air filter part. It does have an air filter on the side of it, which is really cool. You can replace these little air filters, and if you have it mounted underneath your engine bay, it'll be a, not, a lot cleaner too. You can, do, you can mount these wherever you want, but since ours is gonna be portable for a while, I'm not too worried about that. What else is in here? Um, warranty, project registration, complete and return within 10 days, yada yada. I like to do stuff like that. I always turn in my paperwork for that. Call me what you want. And then here you go. Here's the pump itself. I wasn't really sure how big this was gonna be, but I'm really happy to see that it's kind of quite small. Um, I mean, I know it's bigger, but for wanting to mount it in the engine bay, this is actually a really good size. And then, of course, it comes with the jumper cable mounts. And as I mentioned, you can you can remove the, I'm not, I'm not saying anybody who doesn't know what to do with electrical work um, to remove these, but you can remove these and hardwire them in too. It doesn't come set up for that, but it's not rocket science. Just don't blow yourself up or your rig. But yeah, here you go. There's the pump. Overall, I'm really happy with that. It does come with a mounting plate, which is cool. It's not a mounting plate per se. It's just a, a plate that you can set it on to help with the vibrations. That's actually pretty good, look at that. And uh, there you go, you can set that down or you can remove this plate and that's where you can actually hard mount, hard mount it in anywhere else. Or you can even use this plate and mount that against in a, in a vehicle. It's not very heavy, that's nice too. And as I mentioned, this is the same pump that they use for the 400C. So if you have like the 300P versus 300C, etc. The portable version just has a handle and it's just set up a little bit more for being portable. But the pump itself is the same exact thing. It just has, for this example, this extension on here with the nozzle and the handle. So if you wanted to hard mount this and take this off, you have the ability to also. You just remove this handle, put this plug in on this side, 
and there you go, you have the 400C. So, you're set up there. Quick connect there, which is nice and easy. Function on off button right there. And then on this side, that's where you put in your air filter. Cut and dry, pretty basic. There you go. Uh, it is 2.3 CFMs. If you're techie and you know what that exactly means, max pressure is 150 PSI. Okay, so it apparently says it takes about five minutes per tire from zero to 30 PSI if you have a 35 inch, or just about two and a half minutes if, you have, if you're going from 15 to 30 PSI on a 35 inch tire. I mean, that's, that's pretty quick. I think you, there's a lot of different resources online you can check for different times and stuff. I'm not so much worried about times as I am just having a good pump that I know is gonna last for a long time and just air it up pretty well. Um, obviously this is going to be a little bit quicker than some of the other ones. There's a, as I mentioned, there's a bunch of different sizes you could get. All sorts of different stuff. You can do dual pump setups and everything like that. I just wanted to go with a single pump and be done with it. Let me see if I can figure this out. No. There are 100% duty cycle ones also, like the 450p, if you wanted to just be able to continuously run. There's thermal heat protectors in here, so it'll shut off if it gets too hot. All that good stuff. All that tech stuff you can find online. But there you go. I just kind of wanted to do a quick unboxing with that, and I'm pretty excited to go test this out. I might even do just a flat tire test and just fill a tire up from complete scratch just to kind of test it out time-wise. But there you go. If you got any questions, hit me up below. I appreciate it again. Like this video if you enjoyed it. If you're new, welcome, subscribe. I appreciate that a lot. And we're about to go on our adventure, so stick with us if you're interested in following along with that. More videos always, as much as possible, and with everything else, we're going to do a continuous flow with them from now on. So, thank you guys again. I'll see you guys on the flip side.